I guess I'll start out with a top water the way you are. <laughs> that was a flounder. Really? Yeah, right by the oyster. Yeah, I swapped over from the top water because I wasn't seeing what we just saw right there, the blow-ups. So we're going to go subsurface and see what we can get down towards the uh, middle of the water column. Right now we're using a Bugs clickbait minnow. There's a lot of bait fish out here still. Can't go wrong with the bait fish and shrimp imitations. I, I mean, to be honest, I think every lure is uh, designed to mimic those two bait sources. You do have crabs and stuff like that that you can throw, but for the most part, bait fish and shrimp, you can never go wrong with that. The water is exceptionally low. Yeah, ain't no sense in trying to cast inside there cast the outskirts of it. We'll keep casting right here and once I run the extent of the oyster I'm gonna full speed ahead to the back lake. My guess is they're gonna be somewhere in that area. Oh there we go. It's a nice trout to start the day. There's a tail over here somewhere, son. I didn't see if it was a black drum, but my guess is it is. Probably the same as this right here. Pretty little trout. That's a bottom bouncing slash swimming jig. You can do either or with it and it should be able to work the uh, water equally as effective as the other one that we were using. It's just there's no noise that's associated with this lure with each twitch. So if they're down there and they don't uh, want something that's obnoxious and loud then this makes absolutely no noise aside of what it shows. So when you're down there at the bottom of that soft mud, imagine a small little puff cloud from that top layer of the, uh, the bottom. That's what this lure does. And then it's also got the, the flash from the little curl tail grub. Here we are. Just, oh, he let go. Flounder, most likely. Didn't feel the thump, but uh, most certainly was there. Let's kill the motor. Try to cast back in there. See what we can do. All right. That was a good start with the lure, though. Look at that right there. Something just made a big old surface like boil. There are gar out here, so we want to try to keep our lures away from those fellas, but you gotta cast on these little boils, because it could be a redfish. I'm gonna put this away and just go to a legit paddle tail. There's a new technique that I want to try out as well. I mean, I guess there's not a technique, it's just a a new way of setting up a paddle tail for myself and I got this one pre-rigged right here. Let's uh, get our stake out pull and make sure we don't move anywhere. That's a 1 8 ounce jig head. This paddle tail has a hollow body. 
So I think it's going to work really well for what it is that I want to do. Take that, come out right there. I'm going to make a little notch right there. Straight through the center. All right, so there we are. We'll take one of these, get our scissors. What I like about this, instead of using my Pro Cure, it's got a hollow body, as I was saying, and I can take this while it's dry insert it and then it's going to stay there but what I got to do is get it all the way up here against the mouth just so that we can still have the use of the tail like the action on the tail this would be too stiff to allow the tail to continue to swim so we'll stuff this in there and then work it all the way towards the uh, the front And there we are. Y'all can clearly see that right there. So we still have the full use of the action on our tail. And we should be good. What I like about this over the Pro Cure is that it's a dry piece. It's going to stay in there. It's not actually all going to just seep out. That's a relatively large hole. But as soon as this gets wet, I'm thinking it's going to start giving off that shrimp scent see how this works oh my gosh That was it. That's all it took. Just being patient. They're back here. They're back here, and because of the timing, before that sun comes out, they're biting. All right, let's just get this guy in. Water's in the low 80s right now, so that's kind of good. Here he comes. Holy cow, he's probably destroyed our paddle tail. Look at this. That is a nice size mid to upper slot right there. First fish of the day. The paddle tail is gone. <laughs> Dude. There we go. Get that off. Admire this fella. He's, he's bigger than what we want to keep right there, but nonetheless, that is a gorgeous redfish. We'll see you later, my buddy. Oh, there he goes. The plan worked, but it was a lot of work just to get that. This right here inside our paddle tail, so we'll re-rig and uh, get another one going. I'd say it's worth it. I mean, if a lure is gonna catch you a fish, no matter how many times you gotta re-rig, I think it's honestly worth it. That's just my opinion. Obviously, you wanna get the most bang for your buck, but 
That's why they sell you multiple plastics in a package. It's a give and take type thing where if uh, you're going to have the suppleness and you're not going to have the, like, the durability, so a very soft plastic just is not going to be durable. A very durable plastic is not going to be supple with tons of movement. There are tons of them back here, y'all. This is not mullet as well. I mean, I can literally see the wake that they're pushing. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of mullet mixed in with all of this, but what I'm bumping into are reds. Oh, there was another one right there. Yeah, I think these guys are inactive right now. Even though it is early in the morning, I think they're inactive literally have to come out here during nighttime hours and try to catch them while they're active. The water temp is not a factor right now. Low 80s. There's another one. Oh my gosh. That's a uh, it's a tough pill to swallow when you see them out here and you're spooking them as you get close but if they're not chasing bait down there's really not much I can do just hope and pray that I put this in front of their face and they instinctively bite All right, this is gonna be my last cast with the paddle tail we'll probably come back to it if I need to sight cast something but I'm going to go to a popping cork and just see if we can keep a uh, shrimp in the air. Uh-oh. <laughs> Last cast. Yeah, right. Oh, it's a flounder. I'm over here, like, really going at it because I think that we got a, uh, a redfish. I'll take a flounder. Not by it. Completes me a slam. Not bad right there. Cha-ching. Boy, he destroyed this lure. Alright. Well, I'll put him away. And uh, let's... We're going to re-rig right now. But uh, when we come back, I'll be using the pop and cork really quick. Just to see if uh, we can kind of call something over towards us. So what I did to this was just a very tiny leader line. I'm going to put some of this fish bites at the top of it. That'll give us the uh, scent and maybe we uh, get lucky. I rarely ever use a popping cork as well. So kind of hoping that this does work. All right. Oh my gosh, that was not good, <laughs> that was not good in the least. That's one heck of a backlash, that's a tough one too. All right, let's see, can we get it out before a redfish bites my darn lure? There we go, I think I got it. We got it, okay. I have to tighten up that break, man. Goodness gracious. Oh my gosh, dude. 
All right, so maybe it's the tension. Yeah, it's very loose. Wow, okay. Well, two back to back. Maybe that's why I don't cast this popping cork. Or maybe I just like really suck. All right, well, let's try this again. Third time's a charm, I guess. Let's check our tension first. Just... Oh my gosh, okay. Right, let's check that out now. Oh no, buddy. Almost. My tension is super loose. Oh, dang. Oh, you know what? This is the brand new bait caster. I just literally put this thing on and I just uh, spooled it as well. So the brake wasn't even set. I was thinking I was already midway on the brake and I had to set the tension. All right, this next cast should be in there. There we go, you see? All right, well, I got this thing set. It's too shallow for me to cast this cork against that grass line. I've just been trying to cast and get this thing set up. I forgot that I had just put this brand new reel on. I'm gonna push along the grass line super slow and hopefully we hear something. If anything, I'm just gonna start working my way out to the oyster. Oh, that was a that was a big flounder. Oh my gosh. He started taking my line that way. Hopefully that's going to show up in the GoPro. Goodness, that was a nice keeper flounder. Oh my goodness gracious. I cannot believe that. Hmm. Oh, there goes a tail. All I gotta do is just make it in there without spooking these mullet. And that fella should be mine. But I gotta go super slow, keep my eye in that general area. Maybe I'll see the redfish which way he's coming. I think he's going away from me. I gotta, that's what I gotta prevent. Where are you, buddy? I know you're in there. All right, I'm stopping right here. I'm not going any further. I don't want to spook all the mullet. Okay, right there in front of him. I don't know if he got spooked or not. might be after it I don't know I lost his wake that's two of them that came out of the, behind that grass that pocket that's back there oh there he goes right there oh there's another one right here that was a horrible cast the wind got me I can literally see him he's barely oh two of them both <laughs> all I can do is just laugh y'all that's it that's all I can seriously do there are a ton of redfish out here they're actively feeding you just got to be quiet I mean I was super far away my first cast was horrible second cast horrible third cast well let's not speak of that one Oh, I got him. Croaker? That's a pretty big one. Come on, buddy. Let it go. Dude, let my tail go. <laughs> Stupid. 
Oh, I got one. Another croaker. I thought I actually got snagged in my darn trolling motor. I was like, oh, please don't tell me. And then it left right from underneath the trolling motor to the uh, right side. No, I'm using the Savage Gear Manic Shrimp. 